Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister. It is Tuesday here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we have just played the game 20 Questions, a cool trivia game where actually instead of 20 questions, we get 20 clues, but we're trying to guess the correct answer before we get through all 20 of those so we get more points. I'm here with my fellow barristers, Glenn, Ian, and Gordon, and we're going to talk you through everything we liked about the game and the biggest takeaways we had from it. Um, <laughs> but before we do that, we're going to talk about how to play. Damn it, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 20 Questions. Now this is sort of a trivia game, but there is more to it than just, here's a question, do you know the answer? The entire game is focused around these clue cards, of which there are 300 of in the box. Each round, one player is going to be our reader, and they are going to look at the clues on the back of that clue card. They're going to start each round by telling us what they are, either a person, a place, or a thing. Now I've got a thing here, and you can see there are 20 assorted clues as to what that thing is. So we're going to go around the table now and start hearing some of those clues. Each player, as it comes to their turn, is going to say one number between 1 and 20, and then they'll get that clue number, and we're going to put a token on that number to indicate which one they asked for. First player asked for clue number 15 means that I'm going to tell you that in England, I play polo. That player's now got 10 seconds to try to guess what this thing is, and if they can't do it, then we're going to move on to the next player who's going to ask for a different clue. As we go around the table and keep getting the answer wrong, we're going to keep getting more clues and indicating which ones have already been asked for out here on the board, and inevitably it's going to click for somebody eventually, and they're going to guess that I was in fact a horse all along. Once somebody lands on that correct answer, we're going to score up for the round. So first we're going to look at the player who guessed correctly. They get a point for every clue that was not asked, and that's usually a lot of points. In this case, they got six. 16. The reader also gets some points. They get a point for every clue that was asked for, so they're going to get four points themselves this round. Then the mantle of being the reader is going to be passed to the right, and we're going to start a new round with a fresh card. The game ends when a player gets enough points to cross that finish line. They're the winner of this game, and to be honest, we're probably just going to throw all our pieces right back at the beginning starting line and play again right away. Alright, so we actually played two games of 20 questions this morning, and it took us less than 25 minutes to get through both of those. Like, the game plays quick, and it's such an easy game to just say, let's play again. So, we did. Uh, it played really well with the four of us. It goes all the way up to six players, uh, which sounds great, and like there's going to be even more tension waiting for that to get back around to you. And then you can technically play down to two players. Obviously, it's going to be a kind of different type of game with two, where I'm reading a card to one other person, and then they're trying to guess it in as few clues as possible for more points, and slow giving me points as they're getting them wrong and then we're gonna trade who the reader is and go back the other way so cool little two-player trivia game totally different feel for when you have more <laughs> all right five so I'm fond of egos 11 from stranger things yep don't even have to be that specific. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, 18 what I think I like the most about this game is that it really, really leans into a, a, a trivia game that anybody can sit down and have a great time with um, even if you get the first question wrong or the first answer wrong um you get to listen to other people answer and then if you do have it right in your head even if they get the points for it you get to to feel good knowing that you guessed the correct answer even if it's not your turn that feeling of anticipation of when will it get back to me um and playing a the a trivia game that that makes you feel good even when you don't get the answer um is a real big boon in, in, in my book it felt really good the whole time playing it even when i was at zero points the whole game which was our second game uh, it still felt good for me playing so yeah, that's kind of the point of the game, right? Is that some people are going to get them wrong so that we get closer and closer. And if you get it wrong, you're literally just like playing your part in the game when yeah. that happens. So that is super cool. I am a place. Oh, no. I don't go places. <laughs> Hollywood? Nope. Hmm. New York? No. All right, Los oh, Angeles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Los what? Angeles. Something else I like is that when you are the question giver, so you know the answer. And just every single clue, when you know that answer, it's just like, that makes perfect, like every one of them make perfect sense. And then also the anticipation of the, because you want the points for them not getting it right. So it's just like, don't ask, don't ask for number seven. Yeah. Don't ask for number seven. <laughs> that just gives it away to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. And that it, you have the anticipation even as the question giver. Because yes, you can get points, but also it's the, that one makes it easy. Ask these ones. These make it really hard. <laughs> yeah. And it's also worth mentioning how much thought they put into the clues themselves on these cards. A ton of them, which I really like, are kind of hidden within puns. They're like some of the most helpful clues, but you kind of have, your brain has to click to understand the pun as it's put in there. I was just looking like the smartphone one here uh, says, before me, most people knew how to flip. And then the video game one, one of the clues uh, that I really like on here was, my pong has no ping. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> 
So I really like that they, they put a bunch of puns in there and then it's actually fun to think about the, the wordplay on the cards themselves. I spend a lot of time in schools. Dolphin. Yeah. I'm very meta. <laughs> Do you dare? Facebook. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love 20 Questions. I've been playing this since its first version in the 80s. And one of the things that I love about it as a trivia game is that on every person's turn, you are both getting some information, the clue read, that is being read from the card. So if you're paying attention, and you should be paying attention, you learn something new. And then I get some more information in the form of the other person's guess. Now, if they get it right, of course, the card's over, but they're probably gonna get it wrong, particularly on those early clues. So now I get another piece of information. I know what it isn't. So this isn't a, uh, beer and pretzels, chat with your neighbor, wait till your turn come, comes around and then engage with the game. Like, you really want to be dialed into this game the whole time and it really rewards you for doing so. All right, that does it for 20 questions. We had a great time playing twice and uh, we hope you had a fun time watching as well. As always, hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see the videos we post every single week when we post them. Hit the comment if you'd like to leave a note. We love responding to those. And hit the like if you'd like the YouTube algorithm to show this to more people. We appreciate that as well. Thanks so much for this week and we will see you next time.